How are you doing, math learners? This is your free access math teacher, Ash, and welcome to ML with Sir Ash. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss quadrilaterals. In this video, you will learn the different kinds and the different types of quadrilaterals. As well as, in this video, you will learn how to relate and differentiate the different kinds of quadrilaterals. But before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Hello math learners! Welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. Today, we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency-based lesson for quarter 3 of the grade 9 mathematics which is all about quadrilaterals. The first question is, what is a quadrilateral? A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides, meaning that it has four angles, four points, and four edges. For quadrilaterals, we have a total measurement of 360 degrees, meaning that if you add the interior angles number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4, you will have a total of 360 degrees. Now, the next question is, what are the different types of quadrilaterals? Quadrilaterals can be grouped in two. The first group is what we call the convex quadrilaterals and the second group is called the concave quadrilaterals. Question is, what are the difference of these two? Convex quadrilaterals are those quadrilaterals in which all of its angles are less than 180 degrees. Meaning that angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4 will have a measurement of either from acute to right to obtuse angles but not reflex angles because reflex angles are more than 180 degrees easy right now how about concave quadrilaterals concave quadrilaterals are those quadrilaterals that has at least one reflex angle meaning one of the angles in the interior of a quadrilateral is more than 180 degrees now, a concave quadrilateral looks like this. Alright, easy right? How about the convex quadrilaterals? Convex quadrilaterals are those we see normally in our day-to-day -day lives. What are those? These are the different kinds of quadrilaterals. And for you to know the different kinds of quadrilaterals, let me show you this concept map. Now, as you can see in this concept map, quadrilaterals are in different kinds. We have the parallelogram, the rectangle, the rhombus, the square, the kite, the trapezoid, and the isosceles trapezoid. Now, the question is, how do they differ with each other and how do they relate with each other? As you can see, my dear math learners, all of these different kinds of figures are under quadrilaterals, meaning they have four sides. Now, in order for a quadrilateral to be called a parallelogram, the definition is very simple. A quadrilateral is said to be a parallelogram if the two pairs of sides are parallel. What do we mean by this? Meaning, this pair of sides is parallel and this pair of sides is parallel. Based on this definition, we could say that our parallelogram will have these figures. Now, you may be asking, Sir Ash, some of the figures are rectangle, rhombus, and square. Why is it part of the parallelogram? Remember the definition of parallelogram. If you have two pairs of parallel sides, it is also called as parallelogram. Thus, rectangles are parallelograms, squares are parallelograms, and rhombus or rhombi are parallelograms. Easy, right? Now, let's go specific to these three different kinds. The rectangle. The rectangle, as we all know, has length and width. However, the main definition of a rectangle is that it is a parallelogram with equal angles. If you say equal angles, if the total measurement is 360 degrees, meaning that this measurement will be divided equally into 4, giving you 90 degrees. In other words, we can say that a rectangle has 4 right angles or 90 degree angles. Easy, right? Now, how about rhombus? Rhombus, in the plural form, it is called rhombi. 
Rhombus is a parallelogram, of course, it is also a quadrilateral, in which all of the sides are equal. Meaning, side 1, side 2, side 3, and side 4 are all equal. Now, if you would say, Sir Ash, is it that the definition of a square? Remember, my dear math learners, that a square is a rhombus. Why is that so? Because by definition of the rhombus, it has equal sides. At the same time, we could also say that a square is a rectangle because a square has equal angles and that is also the definition of rectangle. Now, let's talk about square. Basically, square is the fusion or the combination of rectangle and rhombus. When the rectangle and the rhombus, all of its properties are combined together, you will have a square. Meaning, to make the long story short, we could say that all squares are rectangle and all squares are rhombi. Easy, right? Now, I hope you have the idea on how they are related and how do they differ with each other. Now, let's talk about the other side of the map, and that is the trapezoid. Now, as you can see, trapezoid is not connected to the parallelogram group. It's because... If we talk about parallelogram, we have two pairs of parallel sides. However, in trapezoid, we have only one pair of parallel sides. Meaning, if this is your quadrilateral, one pair is the parallel side, while the other pair of sides are not parallel. Now, talking about the parts of a trapezoid, the pair of sides that is not parallel in a trapezoid is what we call the legs. And the pair of sides that is parallel that is what we call the base of the trapezoid okay i hope that is clear to you my dear math learners now from this definition trapezoid can be divided into two groups the isosceles trapezoid and the non-isosceles trapezoid this is very simple my dear math learners because a trapezoid that is isosceles has equal legs while a non-isosceles trapezoid do not have equal legs. So that is the difference between the isosceles trapezoid and the non-isosceles trapezoid. Now let us go to the last kind of quadrilateral, and that is the kite. As you can see, the kite is quite related to the rhombus, but it is not part of the parallelogram. Now, how can this be? Okay, now let's go first to the definition of a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral in which the two pairs of adjacent sides are equal or congruent. Meaning, if this is your quadrilateral, these are what we call the adjacent pairs because they share a common point. So these sides are equal. While another set of sides here, which is also adjacent with each other, is also equal. So by that definition, if these two sides and these two sides are equal, then that can be called a kite. Question is, how does this related to rhombus and squares? Now, as you can see in the concept map, my dear math learners, the kite is related to rhombus and square. It's because if you check the rhombus, rhombus has four equal sides. Basically, by the definition of the kite, which is two adjacent sides that are congruent, it is also true in rhombus because in rhombus the two pairs of adjacent sides are equal same goes to squares okay so that is why the kite is related to rhombus and squares but not related to parallelogram because a kite do not have pairs of parallel sides Okay, my dear math learners, I have already given you the definition of the different kinds and the different types of quadrilaterals. I hope you have a concrete idea on how to differentiate them and relate one another. Just remember that regardless of what kind or what type of quadrilateral you have, the total measurement of the interior angles is always 360 degrees. Now, in our next videos, we will be discussing more about the properties of these kinds of quadrilaterals. Now, this is the time that I will challenge you whether you have understood our topic and here it is.
Okay, math learners, I hope you have a wonderful time about our discussion for today. This is still your free access math teacher, Ash. And always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you so much, God bless, and keep safe always. Congratulations, math learners, for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video have helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.